man joining us now live in studio. You know this guy. You've seen him. You've seen the moves he's got. It is Hot Sauce from the N1 Mixtape Tour. What's going on, Hot Sauce? Man, long time, man. How you doing? Good, man. Good to have you in studio with us. And Glad to be uh, here. You know what? We were talking mostly in the first hour about all the events from the NBA All-Star Weekend being in town and, and uh, the Skills Challenge, Three Point Challenge. They need to have you guys out there doing some of this stuff because y'all could have put on a much better show than that dunk competition last night, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, we put on the show, man, everywhere we go, man. But, um, you know, that's that's what it's all about. You know, the NBA All-Star Weekend, you know, everybody from all around the world come out and, you know, participate and being a part of, you know, the festivities and stuff. Well, let me ask you this, Hot Sauce. What do you uh, – you take that, man. It's cool. No, go ahead. Take <laughs> it. Time, no, it's all right. No, man, it's just live radio. It's no big deal. You got a phone call. You're much more important than we are. Nah. We'll, we'll, we'll work around you, man. So uh, what would you have done – in the dunk contest last night to, to really put on a show. Because, I mean, the thing that I noticed is that there was more misses than there was makes. So what do they need to do to make that dunk competition better? Uh, they, they need more superstars, you know, like Blake Griffin, the LeBron James. You know, it's, it's, you got to have it like, the, you know, like a Floyd Mayweather um, pack out fight. That's that's how it was back in the day. Yeah. No no hand you know hands down. It was it was it was like a battle back in the day. You had Michael Jordan versus Dominique Wilkins, and you know Spud Webb. You know you had all the competitors sure. in in one event. Like it's going down. Yeah. You know everybody is waiting. You know the stage is set. That's what that's what they need. Do you that's think what it, they need? Do you think it's a matter of these guys not being motivated to join this? I and mean, we see LeBron there. I mean he and Wade are always there watching it. Uh, or is it fear of getting out there and having a guy with the stature of LeBron James getting beat by Jeremy Evans? Is that something they don't think they could live down, or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's more of a reputation. Sure. I mean, you know, like, of course, Ray Allen is the best shooter in the NBA. Mm-hmm. But it's like the the three-point shootout is kind of like it's, he's too big for the three-point shootout. Then he got a lot to lose if he lose. So it's like, all right, I'd just rather be a part of it instead of being in and having a chance to lose, you know, by – somebody who's under me or whatever so so it's a bigger deal to have tony parker involved in the skills competition than we think it is because I mean, he's one of the top two or three point guards still in the nba but he's still throwing it out there with the young guys the jeremy lins and and kyrie irving and guys like that i mean it, 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 was, it was something fun to watch you know tony parker you know he's very fast mm-hmm. you know for, for his age or whatever and um i mean he still get down with the young gunners and it was just something he probably wanted to be a part of mm-hmm. Hot Sauce from uh, formerly of the And One Mixtape Tour joining us here live in studio. You can follow him on Twitter at The Real Hot Sauce. So, uh, who impressed you the most over the weekend? Is there somebody that, that really stood out in any of these oh, yeah. competitions? Oh, uh, Uncle Drew. Drew Holiday? No, Uncle Drew. Uh, Kyrie Irving. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, he was on fire in that three point competition. Oh yeah, huh? yeah. I, I didn't really know he could shoot like that, you know, until I actually seen him, you know, shoot shoot the basketball yesterday and um you know when he played in the um the um, the, the game they played in man, the the rising friday stars. night the rising stars the game. rising stars man man got some handles man yeah, yeah. i'm like man I'm, I'm a fan of him now yeah he's a, he's an up-and-comer <laughs> i think he's he's gonna be one of the faces of uh the nba you know long for a long long time here he's a I'm, he's a great hell of a player for I'm, sure. a, I'm a big fan of uh, kyrie Irving now well, as we said earlier, you were actually one of the originals from the N1 tour, if I remember correctly. What, right. what, what have you been doing since you left them? Um, we've been doing a lot of um, – I, I had my tour also for like four years. Mm-hmm. It was called the uh, Killer Crossover Tour, and uh, I'm about to start that back up. It's, I'm going to rechange the name. It's going to be uh, the Sauce 2K Live Tour, and that's going to start like around after spring break, like April sometime. And um, But, um, yeah, with uh, N1, the last year from N1 was 2008. And we basically just went overseas, and we did it real big overseas. We went to Venezuela, Africa, 10-city tours in Africa, uh, New Zealand, um, Indonesia, China, Japan. I mean, a lot of people want to know where we're at. That's, that's where we was hiding out at. Well, out of all those places that you guys went on that tour, who, who was the biggest fan base out of all of those different countries? All of them. Really? Really. It, it's not no biggest fan base. You can say that over here in the States, but over there, it's, it's still like it's 2004 again. Really? Man, as soon as you step off the bus, it's like the Olympics. 
No kidding. Man. So when we see those old videos of you that you can still see very easily on YouTube of crowds just going nuts, and all you're doing is handling. You weren't even shooting. You were just handling. Handling the ball and you, just breaking people's ankles. You still getting the, same, you're getting the same reaction to it's, this It's day. the same. Well, in the States, it's, it's kind of slowed down in the States, but, you know, people know not to run up on me like that. <laughs> so I, I give them the blues. Yeah, see, that was another suggestion we had was to uh, to replace the dunk contest with a one on one. You think you could take probably anybody in the NBA one on one right now? Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I can take anybody. How did you get involved with the N one mixtape tour earlier in the day? Um, well, they had like a little tryout or whatever, and um, you know, with me during the time they had a tryout in in Atlanta. It's based out of New York, and they wanted to you know have a little small tour and you know put it out there in different states, five different cities or whatever, and they went to Atlanta, and they was looking for talent, like who got hops, who got handles, and stuff like that. And I happened to be locked up. But during that time when they was out there doing the um, open run and all that stuff, uh, a lot of the guys were saying, um, you need to check out this dude named Hot Sauce. I was already local, locally known, like local you know, legend or whatever. But I was locked up during the time. So they was hearing my name so much around. They, um, one of my friends found, knew, knew I was, and he told them where I was because one of the one of the guys that was he was doing my moves and stuff he was about to get picked up they were like oh my god I ain't never seen that move before he was about to get picked up and get signed but actually the people was like nah 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 he's doing he's copying off hot sauce you want to see the real guy do the, do the real moves and stuff so <laughs> he was an imposter he was an imposter <laughs> but he was nice though but he was about to get picked up just by doing my moves and stuff but they're like nah you might want the real deal uh, and that's hot sauce they were like who's this hot sauce dude like uh, he's locked up and so they came down there and paid my way out and invited me out to the first game, and I tore it up. Well, Houston fans know a little bit about streetball. They had Skip to Malou here for a few years, Ray for Austin. Did, y'all ever have, did you guys ever have the chance to go head-to-head and any war stories you care to share with us? Oh, yeah, not no war stories, but, you know, behind the scenes. Sure. You know, we, we everybody went at it one-on-one, mm-hmm. you know. See, one thing about the streetball in the NBA, they show more of behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. It shows what goes on in the locker room. I'm quite sure we – was doing all that in the locker room. I'm quite sure the NBA players doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's just there's more, you know, out of the way of the public eye. So, Hot Sauce, formerly of the N1 Mixtape Tour, joining us here live in studio for Houston game day. So, you, you've taken a little time off after the tour, and you got a foundation that you're working with coming up, right? Yeah, it's the um, Become a Champion Foundation, and, you know, that's my last name you know, Philip Champion. So, you know, I had to tie that in together. But, you know, the, uh, my foundation is more geared towards uh, unprivileged kids, you know, and me just reaching out to, you know, going different places, reaching out, just doing, you know, events and, you know, free camps for the kids or whatever and letting them know, you know, it's not all about basketball all the time. It's geared to what your talent is. And, you know, I'm just reaching out and just touching as many people I can. All right, well, yeah. before we start the segment, I personally just hooked up with you on Twitter. You want to tell the listeners out there where they can find you? Um, yeah, you can uh, find me at um, The Real Hot Sauce, at The Real Hot Sauce, and you can follow me on my Instagram, uh, Sizman3, S I Z Z M A N 3. Sizman3. Sizman3. And you've got uh, Bring It Back to the Streets Volume 1 coming up, right? Yes, I actually printed up 100 uh, DVDs. You know, I was just, you know, selling them for 10 bucks, and I got like five left. No kidding. Excellent, yeah. man. I'm going to print up a bunch of DVDs and sell them next time NBA <laughs> comes to the to Houston for the weekend. I should have brought one, but I'm going to make sure when I get back to the room, I'm going to have both of y'all one. Awesome, man. Well, we just got that. mad crossover, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matter, matter of fact, I got rid of them at my uh, event that we got going oh, on with the uh, Budweiser. So where can they find you while you're in town? We know that you're, um, you're we, on the ground we, here. We got the event going on at 4 o'clock. It's right across the street from the jam session, okay. right next to the Hilton where the you know, guys you know, at or whatever in um it's, it's great. Yesterday we had 2,000 people outside. Oh, man. So today's probably be more even crazier. That's good weather for it, too. You're playing outside, right? We played outside. They got the venue set up. You know, it's, it's through Budweiser or whatever. And we actually trying to uh, tie in, you know, like a, a sports drink with the Budweiser because, you know, it's more good, you know, to the kids. A lot yeah. of kids were there. <laughs> so they were like, a lot Have of a Budweiser, kids. Kid. Yeah, yeah. You can't kick back on the bench. Yeah. With a Bud Light, <laughs> the kids want to shoot. I want to shoot. I want to shoot. Nah, you got to be 21. So after after All Star and it all concludes here in Houston tonight with the All Star game, where do you go from here? Uh, well, I just, we go home for a little while, you know, on break or whatever, and then that's when I, you know, start my little tour or whatever. But right now, I just I'm just getting booked like crazy. That's good, you know, different cities or whatever. But you know, I mainly stay busy and active overseas. 
You were telling me it sounds like your your passport and your fre- frequent flyer miles have been getting worked out here uh, in the last couple man, years. Tell, got, where man, you been? I, I'd have been somewhere everywhere, man. I'd, I'd have been United Kingdom. I'd have been to London. I'd have been to Paris. I'd have been most most places than the NBA players. I believe. Well, let me ask you this then, because we talked about Rafer making the NBA. You didn't quite get there, but you sound like you've had an incredible ride. You have a preference yeah. over one man. Well, my my name, you know, was is a strong name. You know, I branded my name, you know, back in the day. So it's like everywhere I go, you know, people know who I am. Fantastic. But that's one of the questions people ask me. Uh, why are you not playing in the NBA? But, you know, I never got that question when and one was mm-hmm. when we was all on ESPN every day, every day, and every <laughs> For hours. Yes. But now they ask me that now, and I was like, you just missed that little ride what we had on, you know, when we was on ESPN every day. So my name. Well, you're more known than Mate. a lot of the NBA players right now, honestly. Most of the guys that won last night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Probably. but, you know, them guys talented, man. You know, they very blessed to be in that position that they're in. You know, I'm blessed to be in my, the position that I'm in. You know, God put me in this position for a reason, so I'm going to stay in this position. Is there, so, one, is there one guy that you saw last night or one guy that you see playing the game today that you know, I just love to get him one-on-one on the court? Uh, see what he's got. Not see what you've got, but see what he's got. Chris Paul and Kyrie Irving. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because they, they, we got somewhat the similar game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's handles, man. You know, the handles get you anywhere on the court, man. You know, no matter how tall you is, you can't guard a handle. That's true. Don't, it don't matter who you are. So you going to put it off Chris Paul's forehead, man? If, nah, <laughs> nah, I wouldn't do that, man. Not, <laughs> not like that. I mean, if we just playing around, but, yeah, you know, I wouldn't do it all like that unless it was one at our event or whatever. Okay. Well, Hot Sauce, man, we appreciate you joining us here on Houston Game Day. Everybody can follow him at The Real Hot Sauce. You can uh, check him out this afternoon at the event. Okay. You got something else going on? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> How did you meet Michael Jackson? Do we have time for this? Yeah, we got time for it. How did you meet Michael Jackson? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. It was, um, it was, I was just doing the mixtape tour. It was 2006. Yeah. The mixtape tour after I did the movie Crossover. Um, his nieces and nephews had, had a request that they wanted to meet me and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Michael Jackson, he... He paid me. He cut me a check for seventy five thousand, and I missed two events, which I got fined. But it didn't make a difference. You know I mean? <laughs> but you did meet him. I did meet him, and I got that on the DVD. So where's that ranked against anybody you ever played against? It's no, it's yeah. top, top, top of the world. I would say <laughs> top of the heap. I and I, I also have that on the DVD. Me, awesome, me, awesome. me, Michael Jackson in Neverland. Very, very cool. All right, well, we appreciate it, man. Follow him at the Real Hot Sauce on Twitter. Go check him out this afternoon, four o'clock start time. Right downtown where everything's going on here for All-Star Weekend.